Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Sideshow Collectibles Star Wars 1 6 scale figure unboxing and review video. Now today we're going to be kicking off our looks at the Clone Wars Clone Commander figures that I picked up recently from a local store called Lobos Collectibles. I'll have the link to their Instagram down in the description below. You can go ahead and check them out. It's basically more of a brick and mortar store. You go in, trade in your figures and you can pick up new ones such as what I did with Commander Gantz but you can also purchase out right so definitely check that link in the description below and while you're down there why not hit that subscribe and bell notification icon so you're notified as soon as brand new hot toys sideshow or other one six scale content goes live on the channel. Now you're probably asking yourself right about now, why on earth is Justin starting with Commander Gantch? Well, I really don't have a reason other than the fact that I absolutely love the way he looks. I love the pauldron, I love the pistols, and of course I love the red, it's one of my favourite colours, hence why I decided to start with Gantch himself. I know he wasn't really seen in the films per se, but he was more of a comic book style character, but nevertheless I think he looks absolutely awesome. Either way, what we're gonna do now is get the box laying flat in the light box, and do the unboxing. And here, of course, we have the box art for Clone Commander Gatch. As you can see, picture of the figure on the front there and that really old school Militaries of Star Wars logo up there. Now on the bottom, you will notice a little Hot Toys logo. What on earth does that mean? Did Hot Toys have something to do with this figure? Well, we'll get a little bit more in depth with that a little bit later in the video. But either way, on the side, you can see another picture of Commander Gatch. And then on the other side, you've got a picture of him with his Phase 1 helmet. This guy comes with both Phase 1 and Phase 2 helmet, so you can interchange the look depending on what you'd like to go for. Now you can see a couple of comic book illustrations of Commander Gantch and he looks absolutely fantastic. I might actually have to go ahead and pick up this comic so I can do some light reading in terms of his history. Now the way that Sideshow did these packages was a little bit cumbersome but you can see there is a read up. I will slowly pan down, forgive the reflection. Hopefully you can pause it and read that if that's something you'd like to do. And on the inside there, there is yet another read up so you can pause that again and read that as well if you'd like to get a little bit more info on Commander Gantch. Now this is actually my first ever Sideshow clone unboxing video so this is going to be a little bit of a first for me in terms of the unboxing experience if you will. So it's actually a little bit new in terms of where everything is laid out. You do have this separate tray that includes all of the accessories and don't worry we'll take a much closer look at all of this in just a second. But on the back of the accessory tray you do have a really awesome artistic image of Commander Gantch in that Clone Wars comic book style, I love the way this looks. I wish companies would do this sort of thing more often. I might actually pop this in the backdrop behind the commander himself because it looks really, really cool. I love that Sideshow went ahead and did that. It's something that they absolutely didn't have to do. But either way, on the other side, we do have the main event being the commander himself. Now, because this release, I'm pretty sure, was a Sideshow exclusive of some kind, he does actually come with the alternate style display base. That's more of that white design with his sort of motif on there rather than the traditional Star Wars black display base. But either way, you can see he does come packaged wearing his Phase 1 helmet, Phase 2 is up the top there, and his more sort of civilian Tamura Morrison style head sculpt is up there on the top. But either way, what we're going to do now is get all of Gantz's accessories out here and take a closer look at everything he comes with. And here we have all of the accessories that come with Clone Commander Gantz. Now as you can see, for back in the day, this is a quite impressive showing. He comes with a bunch of stuff, including a plethora of hands. That is really, really awesome. But let's start off by looking at the display base first. And here it is, it's just a straight up circular style display base. I prefer these old school thinner circular display bases to the hexagonal Star Wars ones that we're getting now from Sideshow. They're super thick, they say Star Wars on the bottom, not on the top. I like this art style as well. It it looks really, really good and very, very eye-catching. Where it starts getting a little bit hairy though is if you don't necessarily have all of the exclusive style display bases like this one right here. They do just come with the black Star Wars ones versus these if you don't get the exclusives. Luckily for me, I have been pretty good and I've been getting the exclusives so they all do match. For those wondering how old this figure is, 2012 is the date on the base of the display base there, so it is a rather old release. Now let's start off by looking at some of the helmets. This one right here is the Phase 2. It looks like 
like a Phase 2 helmet should, it's painted rather nicely. Don't get me wrong, if this was done nowadays by a company like Hot Toys, I'm sure the details would be a little bit sharper, but still, in hand, this looks really, really good. It looks like it's supposed to. Now, comparing it to the Phase 1, you can see they are significantly different in not only the design, but also the paintwork. This has this sort of V-taper towards the point down the front here, whereas the entire front of the Phase 2 is all red. Which one do I prefer? Well, I actually do prefer the Phase 1, but for my display, I'll be going with this one right here, because I want to kind of represent the later evolution of the clones, and all of the clones in my collection will be wearing their Phase 2 buckets. Now, here is the Tamura Morrison head sculpt. It looks pretty good. It doesn't look exceptional. We've seen the Hot Toys one. That one definitely does look a lot more lifelike. But for back in the day, in 2012, I'm sure this was perfectly serviceable. And even today, it's still not all that bad. It looks a little bit like him, if not a little bit more cartoonized. And you can see he's got the red stripes down the side there. And also on the back, you can see a little bit of the texturization for the hair. It's made of this really weird waxy style plastic, kind of like what you'd expect to see at Madame Tussauds. Just this weird waxy effect. And I'm not sure exactly how I feel about it. Now he does actually come in the box wearing this collar piece. When you do have the head sculpt on there, you pop the collar on and you will see that in the course, or I should say, throughout the course of this video. Pop that on there, then the head sculpt, and it creates a more seamless look. Now the benefit of getting some of these old sideshow clones is the fact that they do come with these running feet. So this is something that we definitely do not see anymore, especially from Hot Toys. I love the fact that they include these and they do have their own pegs as well. That is a huge benefit with these older clone releases. Every Every single one of the swap out hands comes with its own peg. Let's pick one of the more exciting of the hands to look at because technically they're all pretty much the same. It's just the gesture that's different. This is his sort of peace sign or his sort of, sort of fan out sign when he's giving military commands. But you can see the paintwork is really nice. Again, it's all scratched and all weathered and it definitely looks the part. Now let's take a look at this piece right here, which is the DC-15S Blaster. Now do correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I got that right. For those of you wondering what contribution Hot Toys made to this set, they actually made the weapons, which is a really cool little touch and something that I wasn't expecting going in. But this piece right here does actually move around so you can have the stock come up the back there. Again, I don't really think that we've ever seen that, but let me know if I'm wrong down in the comments below. And this is a really nice stiff piece, so it won't be flopping around. Now the paintwork is a little bit haphazard for back in the day. Again, Hot Toys were just getting their footing back in 2012, so it is a little bit more heavy handed, I'd say, on the silver, but it still definitely looks the part. Now this one right here, being the bigger of the two, I'm pretty sure, is the DC-15A. This piece actually does move around. Let me know in the comments what this piece is, but it can actually move forward and backwards, and it's kind of what they use to hold on to the blaster itself. But it again, is painted in that more heavy handed sort of silver dry brushing. It looks good, but it's a little bit more heavy than I would have liked. A little bit more of a subdued look will go a long way to creating a more realistic look for this piece right here. Now the last little pieces he does come with are these, the DC-17 little blaster pistols, and they look really good as well. They were done again by Hot Toys, painted fairly nicely, a little bit heavy on the silver, but again, they definitely get the job done. Either way, what we're gonna do now is get Commander Ganch himself out here and take a closer look. And here we have Commander Gans standing straight up and down the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that, and of course he is wearing his Phase 1 helmet. I have to say, this guy being in front of me, looking through the lens of the camera, I think that he has an absolutely awesome presence. There's something about him, the stoic look, but also the fact that he looks like a total badass that can completely destroy a bunch of clankers at any given moment, really lends credence to how good this figure does look. I cannot wait to have him in the display with a bunch more clones. I think this guy though will have to be leading the pack because I love the color scheme. The red is so vibrant. It really does work so very nicely for this figure right here. I'm actually currently working on a custom Captain Fordo with my buddy Nick and hopefully that one turns out equally as good as this one right here because this guy really does scream Captain Fordo and that's why I decided to pick him up because I do love that red color scheme. Something about it and I know none of these clones really did anything that dramatic aside from Cody and Rex and a couple of the other ones, this guy right here in particular though, I don't even know the backstory behind, but the look alone was enough to sell me on the figure because trust me, in hand, this guy is absolutely stunning. 
Either way, what we're gonna do now is punch in and take a closer look at the details. And here we have Clone Commander Ganch up close and personal wearing his Phase 1 helmet. And I have to say, he looks absolutely gorgeous. Clone Troopers have always been one of my favourite designs from the Star Wars prequel trilogy, especially the Phase 1. I absolutely love the way he looks. Now, just like when we discussed the helmets when we were looking at the accessories, it is a little bit sort of like that throughout the entire body in terms of the detailing. It's a little bit soft, that's what I'm trying to get at. If Hot Toys were to do this particular clone nowadays, I think it would blow everyone's minds. But even for back in the day, this one was still pretty darn good. I don't actually like, however, how all of these armor pieces are free floating and can move around just as easily as sort of a piece that wasn't attached at all. I wish this was sort of magnetically adhered in some way, because when you're posing them around, it's a little bit disconcerting when things sort of go one way and other things go another way. Especially these pieces right here, they're not attached at all. The pauldron, it's sort of free floating as well. It's just a little bit challenging to get everything posed up. But either way, let's see what he looks like with the Phase 2 helmet on there, because that's definitely going to be the look I'm going for. And I think that looks gorgeous. That is absolutely awesome. Exactly what I'd imagined when I saw a bright red ARC Trooper style. And I know he's probably not an ARC Trooper, but anything with a pauldron in the DC-17s, in my mind, kind of is ARC Trooper-esque. So I really do like the way he looks. And I do love that the weathering isn't just on the helmet or the arms or on one specific part. It is all over, including the pauldron itself. You can see a little bit of subtle black sort of spray weathering on there. And it extends around the back as well. The entire thing is weathered and it looks absolutely gorgeous. So do I like this figure as it is for being an older release? Absolutely. Panning the camera down to give you a closer look at the rest of the armor. As you can see, that level of paintwork obviously continues on throughout. It looks pretty darn good. Obviously, everything has been tampographed on. I don't think any of this is painted. It's not textural. You can't really feel any of it. It's very, very flat in the way it's done, but it definitely works for the clone itself. Now, in terms of the undersuit, you can see it's this sort of ribbed black fabric, and it definitely works. I do appreciate the fact that they've gone with fabric rather than like a silicon or rubber style material. Material, that would have been a right pain to get him into any good poses without having to worry about stuff tearing or creasing or drying out over time. So I do like the fact that they've gone with material. Again, on the lower half, you can see all of this stuff is free floating. It works well when you get him in a pose and just leave him there. But if you want to do a long pose session with this guy, most of your time is going to be spent fighting the armor, getting stuff moved out of the way, then putting him in the pose and moving stuff back the right way it was supposed to be. So that is definitely a little a bit challenging. Something like the Hot Toy Stormtroopers, these armor pieces are a lot tighter, so if you put them one place and then you move a joint, they don't sort of fall down and get in the way yet again. So I would have appreciated a little bit more of a tighter tolerance on some of these pieces. But either way, you can see the red stripe is really thick towards the top, then it starts to thin out towards the foot itself. And I do like that it continues on throughout. It looks really, really good. I also do like that this isn't just a glossy white plastic. It's a nice, weathered, tattered, damaged look to the armor armor itself. And I have to say, this whole piece has really wowed me, especially for something that was released in 2012. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have Clone Commander Gant standing alongside the Episode 3 version of Obi-Wan from Hot Toys. And of course I had to pop that Phase 2 helmet on there, have to have a little bit of accuracy throughout our comparisons. But either way, I think they look really, really good standing together. And I personally cannot wait to see the clone army grow in my collection, being of course led by all the Jedi Generals. I cannot wait to see what that looks like in the display. I think it's going to be an absolutely awesome sight to behold. But either way, this right here definitely kicks it off very, very nicely. Just going over articulation on Clone Commander Ganch. Now, this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful than you can be when you get yours in hand. If you are picking up an older release, though, I still do recommend exercising a little bit of caution because some of the joints in this body might be a little bit fragile due to the age of the figure. But either way, let's start off with the head sculpt itself. It's on a traditional 1-6 scale neck peg. It does move around in all these sort of aspects you'd expect, side to side, forward, backwards, and around. If you do actually remove it, you can see the ball joint is just sitting right there. Now, the arms themselves, because there's a pauldron and more sort of bits and pieces floating around, it will be a little bit more hindered. It does go out to about there. Unfortunately, the body on mine, due to its age, is a little bit more floppy. But either way, going forward, it goes pretty much unrestricted until you start to hit this shoulder pad right here. You do have a swivel at the bicep 
bicep, a pretty decent double bend at the elbow. This piece obviously does sort of get in the way a little bit, but it's not too terribly bad, and it is nicely ratcheted, so I do think that it will hold a pose, even though the body is a little bit more floppy. And of course, the wrists do have that traditional sideshow joint that's a little bit of a longer peg, but it definitely gets the job done. Now, the body itself, because of the nature of the armor, you can get some swivel, but it's very, very subtle, and you do want to be careful not to sort of butt the armor up against itself and scratch it. So do be careful when you're moving it around, but you can definitely get some crunch and some side to side as well. Now for the legs, they go forward pretty much to about there. You can swivel this piece and then get it to go up pretty much unrestricted. That's very, very impressive for an armored style character. And of course you can get it out to about there, pretty decent. Now you do have a swivel at the upper thigh. Do bear in mind this piece also rotates. So you do actually want to rotate the leg, not just the armor piece itself. For the knees, the exact same thing as the elbows, you do have a double bend, but this piece will get a little bit in the way. Then finally, for the feet, they are on those traditional longer again sideshow style ankle pegs. Just wrapping up on the sideshow collectibles clone Commander Gatch. Now, this guy was released a whole bunch of years ago, back in 2012. So, that being said, this guy for its age has really, really impressed me. There are a couple of things that I'm willing to let slide because of how old this figure is the looseness of the joints, the fact that some of the engineering choices weren't really up to par for some modern releases, but then again, back in 2012, they were absolutely perfectly serviceable. This guy, if I'd gotten him fresh out of the box back then, I would have been blown away. Just as I still am today, he still looks really, really good. He can hold a pose, he comes with two helmets and a head sculpt, a bunch of weapons, a bunch of hands, and interchangeable feet. Those are some things that you really don't see nowadays. So again, I'm very, very impressed, even today, with a figure like Commander Gantch. If I'd started off my Clone Wars, Clone Commander series of reviews with Gree or Bakara or Neo, maybe I wouldn't have been as impressed as I am with this guy right here. I love the red. It looks really, really good. It speaks to me. Something about it I just absolutely adore. So this guy right here has straight up gone to the top of my Clone Commander list. That's how much I like this figure. Either way, I picked mine up from Lobo's Collectibles. It's a store in Melbourne. I've included the link to their Instagram page in the description below. Definitely go ahead and check them out. Also, while you're down there, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the brand new awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel, like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.